In this lesson, I'm going to show you how to create HTML documents, and I'm going to give you a quick walkthrough on the JavaScript console and your web browser. Um, unlike last time, I'm going to not walk you through every step of the process, but I'm going to show you some really useful things that are going to help you be successful with this. The first thing we need to do is open up a text editor. So I'm going to open up Sublime Text 2. You can open up whatever you have. And in here, we're going to create a new file. And you're going to save this file uh, anywhere you want to. I'm going to put mine on the desktop for easy access. And I'm just going to call it test.html. OK. Now, remember, an HTML file is just like any other file you're creating. Um, and you know, you open up Microsoft Word and you create a Word document. That's something you're probably familiar with. Think of this the exact same way. You're just using your text editor to create the document. I'm not going to walk you through all of the HTML tags here or really any HTML at all. Um, instead, I'm actually just going to copy down uh, some of the stuff that we've got in the article. So obviously you need to go back and read the article and make sure you understand. Um, but I'm just going to copy that and paste it in here and save it. Now that we have um, an HTML document created with some actual HTML markup inside it, uh, we can actually go to our desktop. Uh, I'll just put it right here. Um, and we can open this file just by double clicking it and it's going to open it up in your default browser um, and it doesn't do anything you know if we type here and hit enter it's not going to do anything um, it's just markup so I want to show you how to use the interactive JavaScript console so that we can run our jQuery and our JavaScript in the browser and test it on real HTML that's on the page so that we can see what it's going to do. The first thing that we need to do is come back and let's go down and we need this link here or this script tag. Now what this does is it loads in the JavaScript library jQuery so that we can actually use it. Okay so let's put this in the head section of our document and save it come back over here to our page and go ahead and refresh it. Okay, so I refreshed the page. Um, now what I want you to do is either control click if you're on Mac or right click if you're on Windows somewhere on the page. Do inspect element. And you can see that it's either going to bring us up here or in a new window and you're going to see the HTML structure, you can click on this window. I'm in Chrome, by the way, which uh, if you're a web developer, you should probably use Chrome for this type of thing anyway. Um, in the head of our document, we see that we have this in here now. And we can click on console and type jQuery. And that's going to verify that it's there because it's going to tell you all the jQuery is a function and so on and so forth. Let's get on to some really useful stuff. So the first thing I want to show you is just how to select elements. So we can look over here in the elements and look down and see we have an H1 tag, we've got a div, we've got a bunch of stuff. So like I said, like I said in the article, you can use this dollar sign parentheses syntax to select elements. Now once you select elements, the cool thing about jQuery is it has a ton of built-in functionality with stuff you can do on this. And I'll show you a page just a second where you can find all of these, but you can do things like h1.hide and our h1's gone. And then we can do dot slide down and it's going to slide down. Uh, we can do dot uh, fade out, I think. Yeah, it's going to fade out and disappear. So anyway, there's a ton of stuff you can do that's just not even scratching the surface. So. If you want to see that, you can go to the jQuery docs. I don't know the actual site, so I'll just search for it. Um, so in here, you can find every single thing you can imagine, and it has really good explanations of all of it. Um, if you're not the, the documentation reading type person, there's a lot of good books out there on jQuery, a lot of good um, courses on uh, just all the different stuff that you can do. But anyway, spend some time checking this out. You'll really like it, I think. Okay, so I'm back over here and I refresh the page so everything is reset. Um, the next thing I want to show you is how to actually navigate the DOM. 
So there's the concept of selecting an element and then jumping between elements or moving, I guess, transitioning. So I can do things like UL, and as you can see, first of all, let's stop and reflect on what just happened here. So I selected the UL, and it's got everything inside that UL here. So I can do a lot of really interesting stuff with this. So I could do UL dot children. First of all, let me just select children and show you that it works. So there you go. It brings back all the list items. Then I could do dot first. And now I have the first one. And now I could do dot uh, hide. Uh, just to reuse that. Dot show. Okay, um, another thing I could do is actually remove this item. And it actually removed it from the DOM. Now, I think if I do this again, it's actually going to grab the next one. Yeah, so it's actually chopping these things off and it's gone. Now, had I stored that in a variable, so let me show you what I mean. Um, so I could do... Now this is getting into a little bit of JavaScript, so this is out of the realm of jQuery specifically. By the way, in case you're not aware at this point, um, jQuery is a library of JavaScript functions. So it's like someone wrote a bunch of JavaScript for you and packaged it up nicely so that you could just use it all that you want to. So it blends perfectly well with JavaScript because it is JavaScript. Let me show you how to do a couple of things. So we can set this uh, first of all, you've got to say, when you're creating a variable in JavaScript, you have to say var, V-A-R, and then we can give it a title, let's just call it eat, because that's what it is. Uh, so we have eat. So now I can say eat, it brings back this list element here uh, with the value eat. So I can say eat.remove, I believe, yeah, and it's just going to chop it off just like everything else. But since it's stored in a variable, I still have it. So see you there? So now I could do dollar sign UL, and this may or may not work the way that I'm thinking. Um, bam, just like that. So the point is, we can, with JavaScript, we can really manipulate the DOM. I have barely showed you how to do anything, and we can already, like, use a script to just, like, totally destroy and rebuild the page however we want to. All right, let me show you how to do a few more basic things. So, first of all, let's select this uh, H3 tag. So, if, if I wanted to change that text, I could do it by, first of all, let me show you how to get the text. So, do HTML. And it pulls back things I would like to do today. So say that I want that to say something else like things I forgot to do today. All I need to do is just pass that in here as a string inside of this function. So anyway, as you can see, we can manipulate a lot of stuff pretty easily. Um, so let me show you how to do some really cool stuff. Actually, let me go ahead and refresh the whole page. Um, let's go back over here, and let me go down to the final version of what we had. Okay. So, let me just copy this. Actually, all I need is this. So, really quick, what this document.ready function does, this says, after the page loads, then run all of this. Um, what this key up is, is called an event listener. And this is one of the most powerful things about JavaScript, is that it's an event-based language. So when an event happens, execute this function. So it's listening to, so this key up function is a listener. And it's listening to this selected element. So what that means is, let's go back to our HTML and talk about this for a second. So we've got this, this is that element. So it's this input. So it says, select that element and listen to it. And when this event happens, which in this case is a key up, so when someone presses a key and then releases it on their keyboard, 
execute this function. So what I can actually do over here in my console is I copy that and I can just paste it right in. So I'm going to put this into the into this page. So when I hit enter, now if I come over here and I do hey a new one and enter, you see it appends it down here. And what this so just really quick I'll walk you through this. So the the what's causing that is you have this key up function and then you check the event and you check if the event happened on a key which is equal to number 13 all the keys on your keyboard are assigned a number and enter happens to be 13 so if it's 13 then do all of this stuff so we get the text from this thing called this what this is is this new to do item and you know that because Whenever you're inside of an event listener, this is going to point back at the object in question that you're listening to. All right, so let me show you how to do one more thing, and then we're going to wrap it up. Um, if we paste this code back in, um, I refresh the page, and I've pasted the code, but I haven't hit enter yet. One thing I noticed was that, um, actually, let me demo this for you really quick. Um, when I ran this code and then I hit enter, it didn't clear the box. And this is not really that important for what we're doing here because it's just a demo. But I want to show you how you can modify your function. Um, because some of you, I, I know sometimes you can really feel like when you're going through this type of thing, you're just copying and pasting. I want to show you how to get in and actually uh, modify this type of stuff for yourself. So let's refresh the page and then paste that back into the console and then we're going to go up here and right here if you want to create a new line in the console you have to hold shift and hit enter so when you hold shift and hit enter it's not going to actually uh, enter the interesting point here that i want to make is that we know that this section is where the action is happening because we are in this if if block here where if we've hit enter do all this stuff so because of that we could put whatever we want in here we could put an alert and then pass it some message and whenever somebody hits enter it's going to do all that stuff so if we want to clear that text box we've we've already demonstrated how the text comes from this dot val so if i want to clear that if i just want to empty that out let me just copy this and paste this here and then I showed you earlier how you could uh, clear or change the contents of HTML by just passing in a string this is a similar idea we're gonna pass it in an empty string so now let's just test this out um, and try it again and now it clears whenever you go through so the point I'm trying to make is that if you want to edit this stuff, you can just copy and paste it in and then go in and, and figure out where exactly the action is happening. So, and uh, when you're trying to learn, that's a good strategy. So obviously it's going on in here because this is what happens after we hit enter. That's it for this lesson. I hope that was useful. If you have any questions or comments, uh, feel free to leave something in the comments. Um, if you have any general questions, remember you can always go over to the forum and post in there. If you have any suggestions about anything else, feel free to reach out at steven at techmaker.tv. Um, we're always trying to improve and keep working on this stuff. So uh, let me know how it's going. Uh, have a great day.